Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I know my voice is a little not quite up to speed. It has a lot to do with uh, being sick. And also the reason why I've not been on air here, I haven't done videos in a week. That's never happened. Uh, I think in the last 10 years, I've never been that long not doing a video. Uh, even when I'm sick, I'm normally doing the videos while I'm sick, but uh, got really bad this time. And so I was uh, pretty much out of sorts the entire time and uh, just not been able to update you guys. And there's a lot that I need to update you on. And our, our friends over on Patreon as well, if you might be listening to this broadcast tonight, my sincere apologies to you as well. Uh, we have a lot of information to share with you, and uh, we'll be getting that updated very soon. Uh, right now, I have the uh, geo, uh, you know earthquakes and vol volcanic uh, map up on the screen for you. And this, I felt, was very important because I run only 4.0 or higher the way I run it. So you don't see you know hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes everywhere. You just see the really serious things in larger. Now, we're looking at China, Russia, Southern Russia, Mongolia, uh, places like that. But I've never seen earthquakes in this part of the world. 5.4, China, of course, yes, China, yes. But all the way up through here, Kashmir, right? And then again, 4.5. Um, in China, a lot of these here in China. In fact, we're looking at, oh gosh, how many here? About seven or eight right here in China alone. And you go up here into uh, northern uh, uh, Xinjiang, China, 4.4. And... Uh, Kazakhstan, uh, 4.1. I thought that was actually Russia, but it's Kazakhstan. And then again, another one in eastern Kazakhstan. Um, right there on the border of Russia, though. And then, of course, in Russia as well. You got it over there, 4.0 in Russia. But like I said, though, in that central section of the of the world, you just don't hear of that many earthquakes in the last 24 hours of that magnitude. Uh, Chazakhstan also, and then going over into Iran and uh, down in southern Iran, you know, just a lot of quakes there. But then you move off over here to Japan and look at the number of quakes here at Japan or offshore. I mean, we've got a swarm of earthquakes going off right there. And I bet you anything, that's going to be a volcano underneath the ocean floor right there on this particular one here. I almost could guarantee it. 5.0. Uh, this is called the uh, Izu Islands. I don't know if there's an island there or not. I don't see one. 5.5, uh, 4.5. 4.9, and yeah, no, I don't see any islands there at all. But um, but then again, I would think that that's probably the case of a, um, or as a result of a volcano underneath the shoreline there, 4.4 there. Tokyo getting a 4.9, so... Those are the type of things we're seeing there. Let me back out just a little bit. Taiwan, also going down here, 5.1. And then just off of Papua New Guinea, again, another big swarm of quakes in one little spot right there. And we're looking at um, the largest, a 6.3. Then 5.0, another 5.0, another 5.0, 5.8, 5 
and can't quite make out that one in behind the other there, but it doesn't look as big. Those could be aftershocks, but really some serious quakes going on in that part of the world. But then, <coughs> sorry guys. Then we get over here to California, or the, I shouldn't say California there, that's the part of Mexico there. We got a little swarm there of Baja, in the Baja, California region. Got that little group there going off, just a whole bunch of them. 4.1 and, and roughly in that area. And then, um, other than that, that's about the way it's running right there. So I just wanted to share some of those with you there. Um, and like I said, all kinds of volcanoes going up everywhere. And it looks like we had a decent quake there off of La Palma. Let's see what size that rascal is. Only a 4.1. So those are the things there that are going on. And But one thing I wanted to bring your attention to here, like in the case of um, uh, the test to save Earth, NASA launches spacecraft to nudge asteroid off course. Um, planetary defense experiment aims to slam DART vehicle into rock, adjusting its path in a feasibility test of deflecting other objects that might uh, uh, head catastrophically toward the planet. And this was the Times of Israel covering this on this DARPA mission that they're talking about right here. And, you know, we had told you, uh, oh gosh, I think going back into September, that you will be seeing all types of articles coming out of them trying to knock off course asteroids, things like that, different things about this uh, happening. But these were just cover stories. That's not what the real mission is, in other words. DARPA, for example, is not what the real mission is. And, uh, and so I thought that that was rather interesting uh, that the Times of Israel, of course, carry an article, like so many others did. But we're working on getting an update on all these issues tomorrow anyway there, because uh, many of you, I'm sure, were expecting late November. and But I also told you that they would be doing some of these, uh, these last-minute efforts to be able to move these asteroids out of place there. And DARPA, I believe, was one of those missions that was being used to do exactly that. I know there's been a lot of people who are holding their breath a little bit to see what was going to happen. And, uh, but as far as I know of, that mission was a success. I was told today that uh, I would be getting updated about these things tomorrow so that I could be able to uh, better let you guys know as well what's going on. And... Uh, and also, we're going to be getting into Planet X. Um, there's going to be some things that I'll be allowed to share with you on that. Uh, I think just like so many other people, you know, it's uh, everybody's always believed it to be a conspiracy theory. I actually stayed away from it for, for a long time, up until the time I got the memory stick that was given to me. Uh, but then, of course, what really caught my attention was getting brought into the circle of Planet X uh, from a governmental standpoint, um, mainly just because of the fact of the studying of ancient documents. The, uh, the Pentagon is wanting to learn the pathing of uh, Planet X from the, the last period in history. So the only way they can discover uh, pathing is to discover and to really search out um, what ancient biblical evidence do we have uh, or other ancient documents? I study specifically Dead Sea Scrolls. I study, uh, uh, just studied the Egyptian scrolls as well. Um, 
any any type of ancient, uh, especially if it's in the Hebrew language, I have studied those types of writings because I'm fascinated by, by anything that lends support to the biblical narrative and to see that what our, our scriptures and our scriptures are accurate uh, and just lend, gives more light to the scriptures, I should say. That's been my, my purpose in studying ancient documents. Uh, but at the same token, it is, it is a fascinating journey when you come to realize that right down to our own Bible, there are fascinating things there that most people would have never uh, dreamed of. And, uh, and, and there's things that I know that I just never have shared, period, with people that, uh, that have always caught my attention. But I think more and more as, as we go along here, I may get to share some of those things with you. And, um, and so I wanted to uh, be able to update you guys, let you know what's going on. And again, apologize. I, you know, of course, there's not really any way I can do about being sick. If you're sick, you're sick. There ain't a whole lot you can do about that. But, um, but at any rate, uh, we're, we're beyond that part now. Uh, I'll be doing a video next day or so here for our Patreon view viewers as well and uh, to kind of get things caught up over there. So God bless you and thank you for listening.